Hi everyone, I'm Gabe McDonnell and uh, I've got a joke for you. Okay, so uh, there's Arnold Schwarzenegger and his friend and they were invited to a fancy dress party. It was a um, come as your favourite international composer party. So uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger says to his friend, he says, hey, uh, you go as Chopin and I'll be back. Gabe, that was the biggest waste of my time. I kind of feel like I need to invoice you for the last two minutes of my life plus just... No, don't, don't laugh, Gabe. They say people laugh to hide their inner shame. You've got a lot to laugh about. So that's a no. It was crap. <laughs> I'd always been pretty funny, you know, as a kid and, and growing up and, and through school, I uh, was always making people laugh and always being silly. This is Margaret McLeod, who was actually my first ever director. I was in a play called Oh What a Lovely War. Yeah. And it was very funny. I was very yeah. funny. I was very funny. It's not a funny show, but you were funny there. The audience laughed mainly at me, I think. Oh, with you? With me. Yes. They would laugh with me. Yeah. One day when I was in secondary school uh, and I was busy doing theatre sports and enjoying that, a guy called Greg Ellis came up to me and he said... Hey man, Greg Ellis. Hi, I'm Steve Wrigley. I'm wondering whether you want to come do some theatre sports with me and the improvisers. I was like, sure. That'd be so cool. Oh man, the improvisers. <gasps> wow. Problem was I actually had no idea who the improvisers were. Because I didn't know they were this huge corporate entertainment company, I just let fly. And afterwards, Greg came up to me and he put a whole lot of money in my hand. And that's uh, how my first paid professional gig came about. So I'd been doing improv and theatre sports for a while. And all of a sudden, this guy comes up to me and says, Hey, Steve, do you want to host this gig in Palmerston North? And I said, well, I've never hosted stand-up comedy before, but OK. So I'm driving up to Palmerston North to go do this gig, when all of a sudden, boom! sort of swivelled, I had aquaplaning and, and ran the car off the road into a ditch. It was really quite spectacular. But due to budgetary restraints, this is just me messing with the bonnet. So I get to the gig late, nervous as hell. I had no idea what I was going to talk about, no material prepared. The music plays, my name's announced, I come on stage and what do I say? Have any of you been in a car accident before? I crashed my car on the way here and it's really not as exciting as they make it out to be on TV. And it worked. I try to base all of my comedy on my real life experiences. If something happens over the course of my life and I think it might be funny, I'll get out in front of an audience and I'll talk about it. If they laugh, I keep it. If they don't laugh, I'll just leave it on the floor, there at the theatre. See, I try to base as much of my comedy on my own real life as possible because life is funny. I mean, people are inherently funny. You look at anyone on the street, there's tragedy everywhere. Tragedy plus timing equals comedy. I've been, I, you know, that, that's so true. Like, just today, I was leading Gabe through my office where I work, and there it was. Well, this is Studio 14. This is where I do all of my work. You're looking at me like comedies or fun and games, and you like, there's business that happens. Phone calls, emails. We work hard, real hard, actually, mainly in the first hour and a half of the day. And then we, um... I mean, Bob, he works 72 hours a week. The guy's got a couple of kids at home. It just so happens that the one moment he's trying to pick out of his whole life to have a nap, I walk in with a camera crew. I mean, that is tragic. But I find funny stuff just everywhere. My last show, Office Boy, was based on my real life experiences working in an office when I was younger. The main point of that show was to try and draw on as much comedy of the tragedy of working in an office as I possibly could. Hi, Keith. Uh, no, just getting some work done, actually. Uh, well, look, why don't I call you back, since it's free for me to call you, given that I've made you my Vodafone best mate, despite the fact that you have not yet done the same for me. OK. Dick. The show was a sellout success, and I really enjoyed performing it. And it really supported my ethos that some of the best comedy comes from real life. We've all sat around a dinner table and we've all told jokes to our friends and family or we've sat there and we've told a story about something that happened to us that day and we've made the people around that table laugh. That's all stand-up comedy is, you're just doing it on a bigger scale. Um, you guys want some jokes? Uh, this guy comes up to me and he's smoking a cigarette and I was like, <laughs> got a friend that owns a horse. And because a guy dressed as a wrestler was trying to tell her a joke, that's pretty funny, right? 
moment I'm going into secondary schools around Wellington and I'm involved in a program where we're teaching and tutoring stand-up comedy to teenagers around New Zealand. So we're going to go and talk to these kids today and cool. hopefully find some funny ones in there. And, and I don't want you to try and be funny. I don't want you to feel like you've got to sort of prove yourself. It's not like an audition. You come here to these secondary schools and I do these workshops with these kids and some of the funniest stuff I've ever heard comes out of their mouths. Diarrhea. Yeah. <laughs> maybe one of them will, uh, will go on to be a big deal one day. I have really big plans for, for what I want to do with comedy in New Zealand. I want to make sure that, you know, we're getting more comedy out to some of the smaller parts of the country. I've already set up a few small gigs in Napier and Whanganui and Taupo, and they're going really well. People are coming in droves to see New Zealand stand up. We'll be in a position where acts like Flight of the Concords won't have to go overseas to get that international recognition. This is the boom, you know, we're, we're there now, and I'm really excited to be there and be a part of that. So I'm sure me and my fellow comics will be seeing you around New Zealand sometime soon. Look out for us. I've been Steve Wrigley. Thank you very much and good night.